how to find the tension in a string tension you know that tension is the force which is acting in a structured string if a string is stretched there will be a force within that string and that force is called tension we have already discussed a case where two masses are connected by a string and if that system is moving horizontally how to calculate the tension it is already been discussed and we got an answer let's quickly go through that part we have two masses two masses are keeping on a horizontal surface you can see here the first mass is m1 and there is another mass m2 and these two masses are connected by a string so at this moment you can see that it is not a structured string it is just connected but if you are applying a force on this surely the string will be stretched and at that time what is the tension in the string we have calculated it hope you remember the formula tension t is equal to m1 f divided by m1 plus m2 and you know that here what is f f is the external force now in this session we are going to discuss how to find the tension if two masses are connected by a string and that string is passing over a pulley and the system is moving vertically so this is horizontal motion now we are going to discuss vertical motion two masses are connected by a string which is passing over a pulley and the system is moving vertically at that time how to find the tension that's what we are going to discuss now for that we need to make a system a system look at this here you can see there is a pulley there is a pulley and this is a special type of pulley we have to make an assumption that the pulley is frictionless that means we are neglecting the force of friction on this pulley and after that we are taking two masses m1 and m2 you can see the masses m1 and m2 are connected by a string that string is passing over the pulley first mass is uh, m1 and the second is m2 they are connected by a string second assumption that we have to take here is we need to assume that the string is massless you know the reason if the string is massless the tension will be the same at every part of the string if you are considering the mass of the string tension will be different at different different points uh, we will discuss that case later in this session we are considering the string as massless so remember two points one is the pulley is frictionless and the second one is the string is massless okay so here what you can see is the two masses are there m1 is there m2 is there you know that if m is the mass of the body the weight is mg so here what you can see the mass is m1 so its weight will be m1g the second one is m2 it is m2g the weight is m2g if these two masses are equal what will happen so very simple question if two masses are equal this system will be at rest it will be in equilibrium because there is no net force so what we are discussing is if it is moving if it is in vertical motion what will be the tension so for that we need to take an assumption that m1 is greater than m2 that's what we are assuming that m1 is greater than m2 so you know that if m1 is greater than m2 m1g will be greater than m2g so surely this force the force on the right side dominates that means m1 will go down and m2 will go up with a common acceleration because they are connected common acceleration and at that time there will be tension in the string and you know that tension will be there in both the directions so both the directions are marked on the diagrams okay so remember our final aim is to find the tension but to find the tension first we have to find the acceleration of the system acceleration of the system so let us assume a is the acceleration of the system that means m1 is going down with an acceleration a m2 is going up with the same acceleration a how to find the acceleration it's very simple first we have to find the total mass of the system total mass of the system uh, what will be the total mass it's a system consisting of two masses you can see one is m1 and another is m2 so clearly the total mass will be m1 plus m2 that's the first step of finding the total mass it's very simple here m1 plus m2 second step is we have to find the net force net force acting on the system how can you find the net force acting on a system if there are two forces which are acting in opposite direction you know that to find the net force we need to subtract the smaller force from the bigger force here you can see in this diagram there are two forces m1g is acting down m2g is also acting down but m1g you know that it is in the direction of motion of the system 
M1 is going down. But M2G is opposite to the direction of the motion of the system. That means here which force is big? Clearly M1G is greater than M2G. Then how can you find the net force? M1G minus M2G. That's our next step. We are going to find the net force acting on the system. It is M1G minus M2G. First uh, bigger force is M1G minus M2G is the smaller force and you can take this as equation number one. We found the net force acting on the system. Now what we are going to do is already we made an assumption that acceleration, the common acceleration of the system is A. Then according to Newton's second law, we have a formula for the force F is equal to MA. So we are writing that formula here, force F is equal to MA. Here A is the acceleration and M is the mass of the system. But what is mass here? Mass is already we found it is M1 plus M2 into A. So we got one more expression for the net force F is equal to M1 plus M2 into A. Take this as equation number 2. So my dear students, we got two equations for the force. First force is M1G minus M2G. Second is M1 plus M2 into A. They are equal, which means we can equate these two. We can equate uh, equations 1 and 2 from that. The right hand side is equal, so equate the RHS. So what we get? M1 plus M2 into A is equal to M1G minus M2G. Remember, our aim is to find the acceleration. So what we can write? A is equal to, we'll easily get the acceleration formula. A is equal to M1G minus M2G. Bring M1 plus M2 here. So it is M1G minus M2G divided by M1 plus M2. Or you can take G out because G is common. So the formula is A is equal to M1 minus M2 into G divided by M1 plus M2. Hope it is very clear. So we got the acceleration of the system. Formula for acceleration of this system is A is equal to M1 minus M2 into G divided by M1 plus M2. Please note that we got this acceleration by making an assumption that M1 is greater than M2. You can use your logic if M2 is greater than M1. If it is in the reverse way, what will be the formula? A small change. Instead of M1 minus M2, we'll be having M2 minus M1. That's the only change in acceleration if M2 greater than M1. Okay, leave it. Anyway, we got an expression for what acceleration A is equal to M1 minus M2 into G divided by M1 plus M2. Actually, this is not our final aim. Our final aim is to find the tension in the string. How much tension is acting on this string? So, you know that if you are considering the system as a whole, Tension is an internal force. It is inside, inside the system. So we cannot apply Newton's laws uh, for internal forces. You know that the Newton's uh, uh, formulas of laws are applicable for the external forces, which means we cannot find tension by considering the system as a whole. To find the tension, we should make the tension as an external force. For that, we have to take a part of this system. You know that that concept is called the free body diagram. So to find tension, either you can take the motion of M1 or you can take uh, either you can take the motion of M1 or you can take the motion of M2, you'll get the tension. So here, I'm going to take the motion of M1, you can take M2 you want, you'll get the final answer, it'll be the same. So to find the tension, let us consider the motion of M1 only, only M1, concentrate only on M1. So if you are observing M1, what you can see on M1, how many forces are there? M1G is acting down and the tension, now tension is external because we are considering the motion of M1 only. M1 is our system now. So on M1, M1G is acting down and the tension is acting up. So what will be the net force on M1? Two forces are there, M1G is down and tension is up. How can you find the net force? Bigger one minus smaller one. How can you understand which is big? Is it M1G or T? That you can easily understand by checking the direction of motion. We know that here M1 is going down. So M1 is going down means which force should dominate? M1G dominates. So how can you write the net force? M1G minus T. M1G minus T is the net force. So look at that net force acting on m1 f is equal to what m1g minus t is that clear m1g minus t that we are taking as equation number three got it now again newton second what is the mass here m1 so net force has got another formula net force is ma but here mass is m1 so how can we write 
the formula is m a so here it is m1 so we get m1 a so what you can see is uh, equation number four and equation number three both are representing what net force on m1 on m1 okay a is the acceleration because it's a common isolation we already found the value of a now you can uh, compare equations three and four what we get look at the result equations three and four when you are comparing the rhs we get m1 a equal to m1 g minus t m1 a minus m1 a is equal to m1 g minus t our aim is to find tension so we get t equal to m1 g minus you can bring t to the left side so minus t will become plus it's equal to m1 g minus m1 a and we already got a value of acceleration here m1 minus m2 into g divided by m1 plus m2 substitute that value of acceleration here so look at the result it is m1 g minus m1 into m1 minus m2 into g divided by m1 plus m2 now we need to solve it in both the terms m1 g is common it will come out so it is m1 g into 1 minus m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 now you can take m1 plus m2 as lcm so it can be simplified like this look at the result m1 g into this m1 plus m2 will come here minus m1 minus m2 divided by lcm is m1 plus m2 again expand it we will get m1 g this uh, minus m1 plus m1 will be cancelled m2 and m2 will come so 2 m2 so it is 2 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into m1 g again rearranging we get what 2 m1 m2 g divided by m1 plus m2 that is our final answer the tension in the string t is equal to 2 m1 m2 g divided by m1 plus m2 now what you have to note here is will we get the same answer if you are considering the motion of m2 alone the answer is s tension will be the same throughout the string it is already discussed so you can take any part of the system either m1 or m2 the final answer will be the same tension in the string is t is equal to 2 m1 m2 g divided by m1 plus m2 and you know that when we are releasing the system surely this system will move look at this the m1 is going down and m2 is going up with a common acceleration and at that time the tension in the string will be 2 m1 m2 g divided by m1 plus m2 hope you understand this topic clearly how to find the tension in a string in vertical motion thank you very much